Thank you very much to BBF for inviting us here this afternoon. Um, well, and welcome to Recovery Preparation Reopening of Your Workplace. I also have a colleague in the room, Nick Babington. His details will come up at the end that you will be able to contact either by phone or email with any further questions or if you want to go through anything particularly regarding your business. Also, Kyle Pym, who is a health and safety specialist, is in the room. So when we come to the open forum for Q&A, you're very welcome to also ask him any other specific questions as well. But recovery preparation, reopening your workplace. Now, some of you may have already reopened as it's, it's a staggered phased return. So hopefully this will help everybody in the room this afternoon. You may you, or you may have not heard of Krona before, so I'm just going to do a quick introduction. We are the UK's longest running employment law and health and safety company. We've been in the industry for over 79 years. And we look after more than 130 trade and member associations. And we are currently, with the pandemic, receiving in excess of 2,500 advice line calls per day. And as I'm sure you can appreciate with your own businesses, this can be a whole range of questions and uncertainty with what's going on. We also can represent you in tribunal. We have our own in-house solicitors and barristers that represent the employer only. And I'm sure you'll be pleased to hear that because there's a lot of... Uh, information out there for employees so we are employer-led so it's all about protecting your business and making sure you have the right appropriate processes embedded in your business to get to enable you to have the correct discussions and to get it right first time with the decisions you make with your business and you can see we have a large number of clients in all areas of business and this can also be very small businesses that just have one part-time member of staff, the small to medium enterprises up to the large businesses, because legislation applies to all. And again, getting it right first time is key. Also, if you come on board as a full client with us, we indemnify all the advice we give you. So it's indemnified so you know you have full protection and protection from tribunal as well. If you are at the moment at threat of a tribunal, please do contact Nick um individually to have that discussion we've heard a lot about the coronavirus now known as covid19 we know it's potentially fatal on prior to the pandemic the outbreak it was unheard of we know what the symptoms are and the nature of the virus is still being studied at the moment there's no known cure and it's had a huge impact on businesses and individuals worldwide I need to just mention the job retention scheme because the 10th of June, two days ago, is the last day that employees could be placed on furlough for the first time. And from 1st of July, there's going to be flexible furlough that's being introduced. And actually at five o'clock tonight, the government's going to give us more information on how that's going to work. But if you've got your furlough agreements in place with your staff, you may have to re do them for part-time furlough and also what that means because at the moment your furlough agreement should say that they won't do any work for you as an employer so moving forward that may be something you need to have a chat with us about and again nick is available to do that with you should you so wish crisis management i think this is very key at the moment i think all companies have been in crisis management one way or the other but obviously with businesses opening up then the crisis management has to be fluid and be obviously up to date with what, where we are in any day of the week. So the lifting of lockdown restrictions. So business recovery is paramount. Now I know we're seeing in the press a huge amount at the moment about businesses making lots of redundancies as the 45 day redundancy consultation period will now be in effect with businesses that will not be bringing staff in after furlough because of the timelines from the 10th of June. But there's an awful lot of decisions to make as an employer about looking at business operations. How are you gonna bring employees back into work? Because you need to ensure the workplace is safe and your employees feel safe. But also the timelines will vary depending on what industry you're in. So as I said to earlier, some of you may have started to open. You may be opening next week or you may still be looking at July the 4th with your industry, or if you're in the um, personal training arena, there is no known date at the moment. But it does bring a new set of employee 
employment challenges and also employee challenges because some employees may not want to come back they might like working from home they might like to stay furloughed different people have coped with this in different ways but as an employer you'll be exposed to legal liability if sufficient precautions are not taken and how you've embedded that and brought people back in to the business so what the key considerations are is make sure your business is protected but also it's really important now to review all of your current company policies because the way the new way of working that's come into play quite a few will not be particularly relevant to your business and you don't want to have a conflict of interest with claims being made from employees but also employees working from home do you have that lockdown effectively because they um, they are the ambassadors for your business how you want them to behave working from home how they represent your business and also have you done um, home working risk assessments with them because you want them to say to you their home is safe to work in because slips trips and falls bring in a lot of money in the um, tribunals and courts of health and safety but also regrettably you may be looking at a reduction of the workforce to protect cash flow moving forward so in all of these decisions you may be about to make within your business are the actions you take the employer within the constraints of the law because we've already seen there's been threats of tribunal claims being made from employees who don't think employers are making the right decisions accurately or there's no contract policies and procedures in the business which can also make it very difficult but protecting employees and business recovery now go hand in glove so we're going to look at ways and ideas of how to do that today now what i go through this afternoon is going to be fairly generic so some are going to be much more key than others and we have the offer of a safe check available to you so this can be very much pinpointed in your business in your industry and i'll talk about that in a little while but you have a duty of care to protect your employees and that's under the health and safety and welfare under the equality act changes in 2010 it's not just employing people it's a holistic approach to employ people as well so also their well-being now as i mentioned earlier some people have really embraced working from home or being on furlough they've loved it other people have found it very stressful very difficult it's had a huge impact on mental health and we've been seeing the rise on um, issues of mental health it's, it's been advertised in the press a huge amount so what well-being initiatives do you have where your employees are concerned whether they're on furlough they're part-time coming back in or they're working from home because the duty of care is still embedded very effectively there. So if you don't have any wellbeing initiatives, again, this is something we can give you advice on. As you may have heard of the company Health Assured, who won the best mental health provider for the third year running. We own Health Assured, it's our employee assistance programme. So if you feel that could help embedding and moving forward, because we're also moving into stressful times when you're bringing employees back in, they may feel worried about it, the safety, they may be having um, some uh, relative shielding at home, or children are not going back to school. This is the big thing in the press that's come up over the last couple of days till September. So how's that going to work for some people? So all these things flying about that we can obviously talk about the well-being of your staff with you as well and the health and safety. When will we return to normal? Well, that's unlikely to be for the foreseeable future. But what is the new normal going to look like? Because as an employer, your work is not completed once you've opened your doors and welcome back your workers and others. Because you will need to maintain routine cleaning and disinfection procedures after reopening to reduce the potential for exposure. And also, the obligation is on you, the employer, to continue monitoring COVID-19 in your area. Because as the government already said, if there's spikes in certain areas, they will expect you to close off your business quickly if another outbreak occurs in that area so what about business planning where that is concerned as well that needs to be uh, obviously as a backup but business recovery so over the coming weeks and months organizations will be bringing, bringing staff back into the physical workplace as we know the furlough scheme and that's moving what the model looks like is open until the end of october but also to be very mindful that your business recovery plans will vary by workplace and jurisdiction. But also to assess risk and ensure appropriate controls are in place is key and to demonstrate that that is what you're doing. 
And due to social distancing rules, segments of the workforce will continue to work remotely. So how's that going to work? Because some staff may say, well, hang on a minute, if they're working remotely, we want to work remotely. So you might want to rotate that round. Again, that's a big consideration for employers to move forward with. But we need to look at preparing the building and then preparing the workforce, then controlling the access, the social distancing plan, reducing touch points, increasing cleaning regimes and communicating for confidence. And I think communicating for confidence is also a big one where staff are concerned. So let's take these one by one. So preparing the building. So build, building owners and tenants must work in partnership. So do you have a landlord? Because in the common areas and also the individual business areas, it's a focus on worker safety. But also check your building systems for also your heating, your ventilation, your air conditioning systems, your fire systems. All these needs to be very clearly monitored. And updating your cleaning procedures because there now needs to be changes to cleaning scope or any additional services in, due to the sanitization and the sterilization. So agreeing policies with landlords where appropriate is key. But also, if you do have a landlord, I would strongly suggest you look at your agreement with your landlord because where does the health and safety sit? Is it the full em employer's responsibility? Is it part of the landlord's responsibility? Because that's also important to have embedded down. But also engaging with suppliers, that's another key issue. And how they're going to um, obviously make sure that the supplies you have are clean, sanitised and what have you. I know we're looking at clothes shops as saying that they're going to have to sanitise clothes if they're returned, they can't be put out for another 40 hours and things like that. But what about the supplies you're bringing into your business or supplies you're sending out from your business as well? and completing inspections, remediations and repairs prior to opening. I know some businesses that are already open the week before, there was a lot of work going on because that's important because you need to have the screens where appropriate up the correct distancing in place and all marked out as well. And if you have as a business gone back and it's not as effective or compliant as it maybe could or should be, that's fine, we can do a safe check for you and I'll talk about that in a while because this is going to be a movable feast to make sure as we're going forward, employers get it right. But preparing your workforce is key. How are you going to decide who returns to the workplace and who continues to work from home? And I've mentioned in rotating that if that's something that's an issue. But de developing employee communications is key on what they should expect on their return. But also, I think it's really important to put what you expect from them on their return. So what information are you going to provide through your new policies and procedures in this regard? Because mitigating anxiety of returning to the workplace through change management planning and communications is key. So developing a return to work plan that your employees can view so it's transparent and it's easy to understand. Again, it's part of the communication process that they feel A, they're being listened to and B, it's clear the, the route planning that you're taking. But controlling access, controlling entry points, reception areas, if you have shipping areas where you, and dispatching goods and goods received areas, how are these going to be managed moving forward? As I mentioned before, with an example of the clothes shop, you have 48 hours sanitization before the clothes can go out and things like that. Because controlling entry points is key. If you have a shop, how many people are you going to let into your shop at any one time? Are you, is it going to be hand sanitizer that people have to use on the way in? What about PPE and masks where appropriate? Are they going to be handed out? What is your expectation of people coming into your business? Do they have to wear face masks and things like that? But reconfiguring lobby areas for social distancing is key. The footprints that we see a lot. And, you know, what is the system? Is it a one-way system? And installing plexiglass shields, we've seen this a lot in the supermarkets, where appropriate. But what are the visitors' policies? Because you now need to implement visitors' policies. So there is very clear what you expect from your visitors coming into your business. Because where the liability sits is key with how you've got this embedded in the business. And determining lift protocols, for example, if you have lifts, is it one person per lift? 
but your social distancing plan needs to be embedded into your business to increase density. So designated foot traffic, a one-way system, as I already mentioned. Shields were appropriate counters and reception desks. You may need to manage schedules of varying start and finish times with your workers and your employees. So again, it's decreasing the density of people in one place at any one time, but also prohibiting shared use of small spaces. And using technology via video conferencing, we're using this today, and you know, we're using things we've never used before, but that may be something you need to use more because your staff may be used to being out visiting companies. So would video conferencing be more appropriate in certain circumstances? Because we're still required and obligated from the government to minimize face-to-face -face meetings where appropriate. But further social distancing planning. So specifying seating arrangements for employees. So you may have to redesign spaces to alternate desk and chair use so you've got the space in place. Add panels between desks where appropriate, but enforcing stringent cleaning protocols for shared spaces is also key. But also reducing capacity of spaces, removing some chairs from large conferencing rooms so you've got the social distancing in place. And for example, if you are um, a rental agency or you, you are an estate agent and things like that, house viewings, how are you going to manage that? Because again, the social distancing, the sanitization and things like that is key. So PPE, do people need to wear PPA, PPE if they're visiting or you're visiting them? But your social distancing plan needs to be visual as well. Also small rooms, you may need to convert to single occupant use only rooms. And also designated and signposting the direction of foot traffic in main circulation paths. So not only is it communicating verbally, it's important you communicate it visually. And health and safety have said they're going to be doing stop, check, stop checks on businesses to make sure they're compliant. And health and safety charge £154 an hour and they're not shy on using that. So there's going to be a lot more fines going out there. So visually and verbally is very key on what's being done. But reducing touch points, so enhancing cleaning and disinfecting practices. So utilising touchless options for access and egress. The clear example of that when we could pay by our phones and touching was £30 and they've risen, that's been risen to £45. That's one example of how that can be done. But enforcing cleaning protocols, as I say, sanitising hands regularly, washing hands regularly, disinfecting door handlers, etc. So, and so you need to also have it signed off the dates who it's done by so as you and to see that it's it displayed as well but also a clean desk policy so introducing self-cleaning practices so having disinfectant wipes available that can be used but removing high touch tools and equipment for example marker pens remote controls so this needs to be monitored much more effectively and to be quite honest with you it's some things that we'd probably never even consider before has been an issue also establishing a food or a kitchen rotor, again, to decrease the density and to keep the sanitization in place. And designate and close room to isolate anyone with symptoms because as we know, symptoms can come on very quickly. So to be enabled to isolate effectively and rapidly is key. But communicating for confidence. So do your managers and senior people in the business, are they alert, aligned on the return to work plans? Do they clearly understand them? Because they also need to communicate them to the people they manage. So establishing two-way communication is very important. So if some people are not particularly communicating with you, try and engage with them to find out why. Because we need to create a trusting and transparent culture. But also, setting clear employee expectations to make them feel secure. So what's your new protocols on working from home options? Because what is your expectation from them through your policies and procedures? Do you have working from home and flexible working policies and procedures in your business? Because if not, that's something you really should consider embedding. So it's clear what the rules are, what you expect from your employees as well. Visitor policies, travel policies for staff that are traveling also, and don't forget with the um, new procedures for travel, 
that people, if they go out of the country, they have to come in and obviously isolate for 14 days coming in. How's that gonna work in your business if you need them back in? Can they work from home? You can refuse um, annual leave requests. If you need more information on that, again, please do have a word with Nick afterwards. But it's also important to recognize fear and anxiety in those returning. So again, an employee assistance program linked in with their well-being is key to help to put in your business if you don't have anything in place now. But in all of this, it's not static once we put it in. We need to continue to test, measure and validate to make sure it's still working because adapting as time progresses is key because this is going to be a very flexible issue moving forward. So let's have a look at the return phases. So first of all, the short term is the preparing for day one, what the new normal will be. But actually it needs to be very fluid because it's unlikely to be linear because possible further contamination. A second wave of the infection could slow things down. Then looking at the midterm, so testing and validating the plans. Are they working as effectively as they could or should do? And then looking at long term, the new business as usual. And again, it needs to be flexible that it, it's compliant with where we need to be and moving forward. But also, let's not forget there could be new medication or a vaccine coming into play that could help immensely, or the herd immunity could accelerate plans. So again, it needs to be fluid and flexible to work effectively and compliantly. But other things to consider, the changes to the current lockdown restrictions are slow and gradual and likely to continue to be so and can move backwards and forwards depending on what's happened in your local areas. And they can fluctuate with stick to measures imposed as I've just mentioned. But we know the types of controls every employer will need to consider and also that's very key on your industry as well because need, some need much stringent controls than other businesses. So it needs to be reflective of your industry. It's not a one size fits all. So preparing and planning your steps and knowing it's clearly understood and it's flexible is key, which is why I do stress communication with staff is key. And that can be whether it is good news or bad news because transparency is so important now. Because a degree of security is important in very uncertain times. Letting staff know they are valued and supported is key but also having processes embedded that if staff are not doing what they should do or being very difficult or refusing to come back into work, there's options for you to consider to go into discussions with them. So to summarize, it's important to provide adequate physical distancing. And I know at the moment there's arguments in, in the media whether it should be one meter, not two meters, but we have to go with where we are at the present time and the government is still saying home working should be maintained where possible and again that very much does depend on your business that can predict that but ensuring people remain engaged and feel supported even if they're on furlough at the moment or they're working from home is key because some people still feel very isolated and as i mentioned considerable Consider flexible working arrangements to reduce peak commuting times as well, especially if in areas that it's trains, it's buses and the like. So to summarise again, staggered use of shared facilities such as um, tea, coffee areas, canteens, maintaining good hand hygiene and clean working areas and to make sure it's clearly defined. Redesigning spaces and the longer term solution of that. But also look out for people becoming overloaded. As I mentioned before, what affects one person has no impact on another. Some people are coping very well, other people are struggling for whatever reason. So communicating changes before return to reduce anxiety or explaining why the changes you're making if they're back in and moving it forward. So establishing protocols before returning to ensure safe practices. But keeping up to date is also key because whilst we've been in lockdown, there were some legislation changes. The national living wage and the national minimum wage changed on the 1st of April. So these are the new, new pay scales, just to make you aware. 
as failure to pay the national minimum wage or living wage is a 25 the hmrc made more than 25 million in enforcement last year but also employment contracts changed because you should all have contracts of employment for your staff if you don't again have a word with nick after the event on a one-to-one -one, he can take you through this but I see lots of contracts, so does Nick, and some are just many pages long, and that's not a good place to be because in those pages, every single page is contractual. What you should have is the statutory element and the explicit details of the relationship and the implied part of how you want people to behave elsewhere. And I've mentioned in this uh, webinar before how you want people to behave in, and moving forward with the new things we have to put in place is key. And the reason I'm talking about contracts is because under the good work plan that came in on the 6th of April, while we were in lockdown, became a day one right for all workers to have a written contract. So that's workers as well as employees. And employees and workers will now receive broadly similar contracts, but it will be clearly defined what the relationship is. Also in your contracts, you must have details of probation, details of all paid leave, and that's the statutory elements as well. So don't forget the new bereavement leave Jack's law came in, so that will need to be included. Or remuneration and benefits and training entitlement, and specifically information on working hours. So it's very clear what the relationship is. Again, if you feel this is something that you're not sure of or you haven't got embedded at the moment, please do have a word with the soft side. It's never too late to put these things in. We put them in such a way that it doesn't become a battle between employer and employee. But also, if you have people, for example, on zero hours contracts, now you may have furloughed them, which you were able to do with zero hours workers, but if they've been with you in your business for a minimum of 26 weeks, they will have the right to request a switch to a more stable contract within your business to give them greater certainty around the minimum number of hours they can expect and when they will be working. Now, as an employer, you will be able to veto this request by reason prescribed by law. But if you do have people on zero hour work that regularly work the same days, the same hours, it could be very difficult. And if you can foresee moving forward, this could be an issue. Again, please do have a word with us after this afternoon and we can assist you moving forward. So there's a couple of issues here. But it's really also important to embed your standards and expectations of how you want your staff to behave within your business through your policies and procedures and they should be in your staff handbook so the question is do you have a handbook now you may say i'm only a small business why do i need that well as i mentioned earlier employment legislation applies to any size business and you can get the same award made against you as a small business that a multinational could have obeyed against them and they would find it easier to absorb that cost, I'm sure. So do you have a handbook? Where do you keep it? Have you shared it with your staff? But importantly, when was the last time you updated it? And what does it cover? Because with where we are now due to the pandemic, there's going to be ongoing changes to workplace policies and procedures. So there's going to be adjustments on existing policies. And this, some may include, for example, attendance, because you may not have flexible work and work from home before. So again, that needs to be key. What well, holidays and paid time off? Now the government changed with the pandemic that staff could carry over four weeks holiday to cover two years. But if your business can't support that, then what are your policies and procedures on that? What about paid time off? What about remote working? How do you know what they're doing? Um, what is the reporting procedures? But also working hours, again, this is ongoing, isn't it? Looking at start, stop times, breaks, lunch times, flexible hours, staggered working hours. So your policies and procedures showing what you require from your staff, but also clearly defines if that's not working as an employer, what steps you can take as well. Time clipping, clock, clocking in and clocking out. And that can be when they're working from home. Leave policies, including sick leave, because this is also changed with the coronavirus. If people have to self-isolate, what, what's the legislation on that? What can you do as an employer? But also travel policies, including business and personal travel now, because staggering start stop time, so there's less density. And what does that mean for you and your staff? And information technology and usage. And this is a big one, because if you've had staff working from home, or you may be bringing them back into furlough, and some of your staff may be starting to work from home, what about the GDPR legislation? You know, 
protecting information that's on the laptops what about anybody else seeing it what can they do with that so you need confidentiality policies and procedures in line with IT and usage and things like that as well so in summary there are a number of factors to consider when reopening or moving forward key ones are staff hours may need to be modified and special considerations to be made in managing staff on their return to work key protecting clients and staff and these new measures are likely to be in place for some time so your policies and procedures really need to reflect current working practices because your policies and procedures, your standards and expectations from your staff. So if you'd like more information on this, do have a word with Nick because we do bespoke policies and procedures. And we have also a lot of knowledge and, and assisting a huge amount of companies with what needs to be happened. And this is through our online system, Bright HR. It's an online HR system. It's also got a furlough navigator and assist bringing people back into work under health and safety. I'm just gonna let this run for a couple of minutes, give you some information on this, then I'll chat about it further. Introducing Bright HR's Back to Work Navigator. The Back to Work Navigator is easily accessible from your Bright HR dashboard and will guide you through all of your return to work processing. You will see the number of currently furloughed employees within the business and a quick link to create back to work rotors, ensuring that the safety and well-being of your staff is accounted for as members of the team return. Rotors will also alert you to current employee absence as you add shifts, ensuring that the correct individuals are assigned to the correct working times. Once a rotor is published, everyone included in that rotor will receive a notification informing them that a new rotor has been added and that they're included. This will be sent directly to their Bright HR account via email and if they have the Bright HR app downloaded on their mobile to their mobile phone too. In order to track and monitor these staggered shifts you also have access to our free clocking in and clocking out app Blip. Blip will allow you to oversee the working times for your employees and add any instances of lateness to their profile should start times not be adhered to. You will also be able to view all current and past furlough absences in the calendar, giving you at a glance information pertaining to the start and end times or ongoing furlough absences within the business. The Back to Work Navigator will also allow you to create company-wide notifications, which will be sent to every member of staff on the system, providing you the quick and simple means to convey important messages and information to your employees. As part of Bright HR's Back to Work tools, we have also created a Back to Work e-learning course with information and guidance on various aspects of return, such as social distancing and hygiene measures within the business, providing a certificate upon completion of the final assessment. Our new Employee Status feature will allow you to view and edit the location of an employee if they are away from the company site assisting with the preparation of social distancing measures within the workplace. The annual leave summary report will further support this, allowing you to track annual leave taken and the remaining balance for individual employees within this annual leave year. You also have access to our 24 hour advice line, connecting you to a member of the team who can provide expert advice on all things required in the return to work process. Finally, as part of our Back to Work Navigator, you will also find all of the support, guidance and advice required to ensure that you are both compliant and safe when staff members return. Resources here include downloadable templates which can be utilised and adapted to suit all of your business needs. Log in to Bright HR today to guarantee that you are back to work ready and fully compliant with return to work procedures. Stay safe and take care. So as you can see, that's the whole host of information again, so getting it right first time is key. But also available to BBF members, we're offering a safe check that, uh, for example, Carl Pym is in the room, you can chat with him in a minute for any safe check issues, that can come on site and do a safe check for you to show what you should have displayed in line with health and safety. This is available to you for £195 plus VAT, which is £100 saving on a safe check. And Nick Babington's number, as you can see at the bottom, is 07896 
036993. So if that's something that you'd like to happen in your business, even if you've had it already open, because peace of mind is a wonderful thing moving forward, then that is available to you to take on board. But also, as well as the safe check on the guidance checklist and posters, Bright Safe, as you saw part of it on the Bright HR at the end. So back to work specific sector guidance, and you're looking at hygiene guidance and checklists and the COVID-19 toolbox talks, secure display notices, all the health and safety procedures and management systems with the effective risk assessments, appropriate working from home guidance and checklists and e-learning for managers and employees. So it's embedded effectively that they understand under health and safety as well. So please, if you feel that's something that you should consider in the situation we're in, then do have a word with Kyle or Nick in a few minutes. But there's a lot of legislation moving forward. There's a lot of expectation on employers now and also having clear understanding with your employees. And some employees are gonna come back and be fab. Others are gonna cause a few issues and we get a lot of calls on that at the moment. But with the legislation, Krona, we make sure that a legislation works for you, the employer, so that you're getting it right first time. And if you do get the challenge, then we can assist you and navigate forward what that may be. And that may be that you have to reduce your business, you have to put people on short term working, you have issues with people refusing to come back as well. So we have all this information available to hold your hand through so you can protect your business while making these decisions. I hope you've enjoyed the webinar this afternoon. I hope it's given you some guidance moving forward. And also, as I mentioned, there's plenty of things we can do to assist you with your policies, your procedures, your contracts um, on HR, on health and safety. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email Nick and it's nick.babbington at krona.co.uk. So thank you for listening to me this afternoon. I'm gonna come back into the room now and stop sharing my screen. And thank you very much for your time. <laughs>